Alright, so today I'm back with yet another chapter review. However, like last time, it's still about episode Nagi, as we will dive into the second chapter, and today I don't really have any more to say than that. Or I kind of do as before jumping into it. Please leave a like and a comment, as well as join the Discord server down in the comments. With that out of the way, let's get into it. The monster duo advances at an astonishing speed, their talents making waves and capturing the attention of the massive Blue Lock project. They single-handedly dominate their matches and rapidly gain popularity. One girl mentions that Ryo has been spending a lot of time with that guy lately, to which the other girl agrees, identifying him as Nagi. A third girl explains that they began playing soccer together, which could be the reason behind their closeness. She admits she never expected Ryo, who seems capable of excelling at anything, to become so obsessed with soccer, and reflects that this is what makes it appealing to him. When asked if she's referring to Nagi, she clarifies that she is, in fact, talking about soccer itself. Meanwhile, Ryo brings Nagi the shoes he had mentioned wanting, and while playing his game, Nagi thanks him absent-mindedly. Ryo urges him to take a proper look at the shoes, to which Nagi nonchalantly replies that he is going to die in the game. Ryo, switching gears, asks if Nagi wants any snacks, but Nagi declines, claiming that digestion is too much of a hassle. The two then go cycling together, with Nagi enjoying the sensation of the wind. When they later run laps, Ryo encourages him to do one more, but Nagi collapses, saying he's too exhausted to even walk. Dramatically, he claims that his legs are broken, his cells are dead, and his heart has stopped. Ryo chuckles, calling him a zombie, to which Nagi responds that he is Nagi of the dead. Annoyed but amused, Ryo lifts Nagi onto his back, complimenting him on his hard work for the day. Nagi remarks that Ryo is weird, to which Ryo replies that he doesn't need to be told that. Nagi, somewhat affectionately, admits that hanging out with Ryo doesn't bother him, which makes Ryo laugh. He says he can tolerate Nagi well enough, and that being together is fun, asking Nagi if he's also starting to enjoy himself. Nagi simply replies that he doesn't want to play soccer, but that being with Ryo isn't a hassle, so he doesn't mind. Ryo pushes for more, telling him he should at least say that he's having fun. Nagi, undeterred, insists that he's tired, and it's time to go home. Ryo acknowledges this, but still urges him to do one more lap, to which Nagi protests that he's already done more than usual today, calling it earnest. Ryo agrees, and then confesses that his father has declared he won't acknowledge him unless he leads Japan's national team. That's why, Ryo says, both participating in and winning the nationals are merely stepping stones. He then kicks the ball straight into the goal, declaring that he'll continue winning and ultimately represent Japan in the shortest time possible. Turning to Nagi, he asks him to join him on this journey until they win the World Cup. Nagi, in response, merely states that he's hungry. At that moment, Baya returns, praising Ryo and asking if she could have a word with him. Ryo, curious, asks what it's about. Baya reveals that she has a letter from the football union. Stunned, Ryo listens as Baya explains that there is a chance his father might have thrown the letter away, so she hid it and brought it to him instead. Grateful, Ryo thanks her. Nagi also shows Ryo a letter similar to the one he received though he admits he hasn't opened it yet. Shocked, Ryo suggests they open their letters together. Upon reading his, Ryo discovers he has been selected for a special training program, leaving him amazed. Nagi, meanwhile, notes that his letter says the same, though it lacks details. Ryo wonders if it's an unexpected call for a Japanese training camp, or perhaps a U18 delegation summons. Nagi, uninterested, complains that he hates training camps and only wants to play games and take naps. Frustrated, Ryo asks what Nagi is trying to say, insisting that this is a significant opportunity. If they can make an impact there, it would be the fastest route to joining the national team. Nagi, unfazed, asks Baya if she can intervene, but she laughs, saying she cannot. Baya reveals that she has cared for Nagi since he was born and can only respect his will. Nagi decides to leave for the moment and asks Baya for a favor. She inquires what it might be, and Nagi explains that he has a cactus named Choki. If he doesn't return for a while, he asks that she water it for him. Baya agrees to his simple request, understanding its importance. Ryo asks Nagi if he's really keeping a plant, to which Nagi responds that he likes having a companion in his room. He explains that he asked the shopkeeper for the least troublesome plant, and that's how he ended up with Choki. Ryo laughs, but Nagi calmly advises Baya not to overwater the plant, saying she only needs to water it once every two to three weeks, or essentially, she can just leave it alone. Baya nods, repeating his instructions, then adds with a hint of curiosity, asking if the same could be said about him. Confused, Nagi asks what she means. Baya brushes it off, telling him it's nothing, 
and he should forget about it before requesting that Nagi take good care of Ryo for her. Nagi, nonchalant, replies that he'll do whatever works. Ryo then urges him to hurry. They arrive at the location and Nagi asks if they are job hunting. Ryo scoffs, telling him that they aren't, though he admits that he has no idea what kind of people are inside. With excitement, he adds that he can't wait to kick their asses. Nagi, less enthused, asks what happens if someone better than him is inside, and teaming up with that person would be more advantageous. Ryo assures him that he wouldn't be that heartless, but Nagi simply says that he wouldn't mind if Ryo did. As Ryo opens the door, they are greeted by a room full of people. Ryo is amazed by the sheer number, while Nagi muses that it looks like they're trying to build an army. Ryo recognizes some familiar faces and points them out, explaining that they are from the same generation as many famous high schoolers, though Nagi, uninterested, continues to play his game. Shocked, Ryo tells Nagi to stand up, reminding him that they have a lot of rivals to defeat. At that moment, another familiar face appears, Kira Ryosuke. Ryo is stunned, as Kira is rumored to be part of the Japanese U18 team. Nagi, however, feels underwhelmed by Japan's so-called jewel and thinks that Kira is just an average-looking short guy. The person Nagi notices is Isagi Yoichi, the dark-haired man who is the main character of Blue Lock, but he dismisses him just as quickly. Ryo corrects Nagi, pointing out that Kira is the tall, handsome one, not the dark-haired guy, but Nagi remains indifferent. Suddenly, a microphone crackles to life, and the host, Igo Jinpachi, introduces himself. He declares that, based on his judgment and biases, the 300 players in the room are the best strikers under 18 in Japan. Igo reveals that he has been hired to make Japan a World Cup champion. Ryo is taken aback by the boldness of his words. Igo explains that the only thing Japan needs to become the best in the world is the birth of a revolutionary striker, and with these 300 players, he intends to conduct an experiment to create the world's best striker. He then introduces them to the facility built for this very purpose, called Blue Lock. Ryo is left in shock as Ego continues, explaining that from today onward, all of them will be living at Blue Lock, undergoing his special training. They will not be allowed to return home, marking the end of their previous soccer careers. Ego promises that the one who survives and outlasts, the other 299 players will become the best striker in the world. With that, he concludes his speech, stating that this is all he has to say. Fired up, Ryo enthusiastically tells Nagi that they will become the best in the world. However, Nagi, uninterested, declares that he's going home. He points out that being one out of 300 is too tough and he lacks the motivation, calling the task impossible for him. Ryo, taken aback, tells him to wait and argues that the two of them can do it. They should at least participate for now. Nagi, confused, reminds him that Ego said they'd be fighting until only one remains, meaning that one day, he and Ryo will become enemies. Ryo is shaken by Nagi's words. Ego then speaks again, explaining that if they cannot become the world's top egoist, they cannot become the best striker. He poses one final question, asking them to imagine that they are in the final match of the World Cup, with 80,000 spectators watching. The score is 0, 0, and it's overtime in the second half. During the very last play, they receive a pass from a teammate. Nagi envisions the scenario as Ego continues, explaining that it's a 1v1 with the goalkeeper, and 6 meters to their right. A teammate is positioned for an almost certain goal if passed to. In such a moment, with all of Japan's expectations resting on them, Ego challenges them to shoot without hesitation. Only those crazy enough to make that selfish decision will be able to proceed. As he finishes speaking, the door behind him opens, and everyone looks amazed as there's smoke coming from the doors. Ego touches his glasses and says that he will say it once more. Soccer is a sport that exists for strikers and for them all to think of everyone else on the field besides them as their supporting actors. He asks them to discard their common sense as on the field they are the leading actors. His voice gets more and more intense as he tells them all to take pleasure in their own goals above all else and for them to live only for that moment as that's truly what being a striker is about. And after Igo said that Isagi Yoichi was the first one to start sprinting towards the goal, Nagi is in shock when he sees Isagi whose eyes look hungrier than ever as he runs. Isagi's running creates a chemical reaction that makes everyone start to sprint for the door. Ego starts to smile as he is still standing right by the door and has floods of people running past him. After a while, everyone has entered, or everyone except two, and those are Ryo and Nagi. Ego asks them what the matter is and asks them if they aren't coming. They are quiet for a while before Ryo says that they are going. But before he can finish his sentence, Nagi cuts him off and says that he isn't going as it sounds like a pain. He continues and says that Blue Lock really isn't for him, 
and that he would probably get bored and want to leave right away. Ryo is shocked as he hears this, but then Igo cuts in as he asks Nagi if he was bored by his explanation earlier. Nagi, with a furious and insane aura, says that he is, as after all, it was easy for him to achieve the winning goal of the World Cup. This sudden ego of Nagi shocks Ryo, as Nagi's eyes are legit glowing with excitement. Ego is quiet for a while before he says that Nagi won't make it. Nagi is confused, but Ego says that Nagi still doesn't understand his own ego. Ego continues and says that there are plenty of self-proclaimed geniuses like Nagi. They all grow up without a fight, and because of that, Ego turns away and says that he isn't interested in self-conscious, overgrown bastards who just want to live without getting hurt, and he tells Nagi to go and live in comfort while he slowly rots away. Nagi just says fine and is about to leave, but that's when Ryo starts to go at it. He screams at Ego that he's got to be kidding and says that Nagi isn't like any of those geniuses out there. He screams again that the two of them can make it. Ego catches Ryo's words and asks him what he means with the two of them, as there can't be two best in the world. Then suddenly, Ryo grabs Nagi's shirt and pulls him close as he tells Ego that he will make Nagi the best striker in the world and declares that it's his ego. Nagi asks him to wait and that he doesn't want to, but Ryo just tells him to shut up and to believe in Ryo. He pulls Nagi romantically close as he tells him that he will make Nagi's life more enthralling than any nap or game. He won't let Nagi feel bored ever. Nagi is still a bit hesitant, but finally says fine. However, he asks Ryo to promise him to stay with Nagi right until the end. Ryo asks if that's Nagi's ego, but he also says that he promises. With that, both of them walk inside Blue Lock, and as the door closes behind them, Ego sits down on the stairs and says that it's time to start the place where football is the hottest in the world. But wow, these episode Nagi chapters just get more and more intense, as in the last one, we had a crazy first match, while in this one, we got this amazing speech from Ego, not to mention the last moment where only Ryo and Nagi were left, and both of them showed off some of their crazy egos, but unfortunately I don't really have that much more to say yet, as we basically have already seen all of this firstly, from Isagi's perspective, but also from the episode Nagi movie. So there's nothing to really discuss now here in the end. Anyway, if you like Blue Lock and videos like this, then I would highly suggest you subscribe to this channel, and while you are at it, leave a comment and a like as it helps out with the algorithm a ton. And if you're curious to see another video of mine, then please watch the video that will be popping up on the screen now. Anyway, thanks for watching, and have a great day. Bye.